Setting up an AMCI Ethernet IP encoder on the Productivity 3000 is easy. Our goal is to have all the data transferred between the encoder and the Productivity 3000 in the background, so our ladder code doesn't have to fool with controlling all the transfer details. Well, that's exactly what the implicit or I.O. messaging of the Ethernet protocol does, right? Once you set it up, it automatically maintains the data transfer for you so your ladder code can just deal with local data arrays. Here we go. Here we have an open project, the hardware has been auto-detected, and we're online with the Productivity 3000 controller. To set up communications with the AMCI Ethernet IP encoder, we just double-click on Hardware Configuration and drag a new generic client onto the screen. It's generic because we haven't told it what we're connecting to yet, right? And now we just fill in the blanks. Here we give it a name. Over here we create some tags to collect device info and monitor connection status. And over here we provide the IP address of the device we want to talk to, the encoder in this case. Down here we select the implicit or I.O. messaging and we create a tag that we use to enable the data transfer. Over here we create some more tags so we can monitor the health of the connection from our ladder code. Down here we set up the input, output, and configuration of the encoder. We want the encoder to deliver data just to us, so let's change this to unicast. And let's ask it to send that data four times a second, which is every 250 milliseconds. We like that. The connection point for the input to the encoder, which they call the assembly instance in the AMCI documentation, can be a one or a three, depending if you want the encoder to send just position data or both position and velocity. We'll make it a one and get only position data in this example. We need to create an array to put that position data in and the software reminds us that we haven't actually created that array yet and gives us an opportunity to do so. I love this because it means I don't have to create all my tags ahead of time. I can just create them on the fly. Let's see, according to the documentation we need 16-bit unsigned integers here and we'll need two of them. We want the encoder to send both of those elements to us so we put a two right here. Now this was the data from the encoder to us, our input data. Now let's do the output data. Here we set how often we're going to send data to the encoder. Note that it doesn't have to be the same as the input. For our purposes, we'll go ahead and leave it at the 250 milliseconds. The connection point, or assembly instance, is 101 for this encoder, and we need to create an array of data to send to the encoder. Again, the software reminds me I haven't created that yet. I know from the documentation that it needs to be 16-bit integers, and that we'll need three of those. And of course, we want to send all three down to the encoder. Again, I found all of those numbers in the AMCI documentation. Now, some devices require a four-byte status header to go down with this output data. This AMCI encoder is one of those devices, so we need to make sure that this little checkbox is checked right here. Now, to be honest, I found that by trial and error. Without the header, the output data I sent to the encoder wasn't recognized. With the header, everything worked as expected. Configuration data is required for the encoder, so we check this box. And there's a couple ways you can configure this encoder, which you select with the connection point, or assembly instance. In our case, we're going to use assembly instance, or connection point number 102, which requires 8 bytes. Well, that's it. We're done. So we hit OK. The software reminds us that we haven't defined all these status tags yet, and it even recommends what we might want to use for those. These all look great except I usually like to make my strings kind of large just so we don't miss any messages that we might get. Perfect. Now let's do one more thing. Let's go back into that scanner and hit this monitor button right here. That automatically creates a data view for me that's populated with all of this stuff we just created. I love that I don't have to do that manually. Great. Let's go ahead and download the program to the controller. We're online, we're running. Let's bring up that data view we created, which was this one right here. And I'm going to expand my output array, my configuration array, and my input array. And with this particular device, you need to have all the configuration parameters set up before you enable it. But just for the heck of it, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and try and enable it and see what happens. Well, look, it looks like we got an error of some kind, right? We got an error 21, which is invalid segment and path. So the AMCI encoder didn't understand something we sent it. Now I did this on purpose just to show you how these error messages work. You can go look up this error message online. There's a great chart here under Ethernet IP error codes where it lists the details of all these errors. It's fantastic. But I know what happened here. If I go back to hardware configuration, bring up my encoder, and look under configuration data, well, I told it the connection point, and I created an array I didn't specify how many bytes should be sent. There were eight bytes in that array, so let's put an eight there and say OK. 
We do need to send that back down to the controller, so let's do that. Now we are running, we're online, here's our data view. Now if I try and enable the encoder, what happens? Well, we got a new error. We are connected to the encoder, but the connection is unconfigured. The encoder is telling me we didn't set up the configuration parameters right, and sure enough, look down here, we didn't set up any configuration parameters. Well, this particular device requires that these be set up, so let's go ahead and do that. If you look in the documentation, it'll tell you that this byte has to be a 1F. This byte sets up the format of some of the data that's returned, and we'll put a 4 there that selects the format of the velocity data that comes back. It specifies it'll be in pulses per second, I think. The next four bytes specify how many counts per revolution. It defaults to 65,000, but let's go ahead and change it to like 100 counts per revolution. This byte enables that scaling, and this byte, if it's a 1, will say count up when it goes counterclockwise. If it's a 0, count up when it goes clockwise. So we'll leave that as a 0. Let's go ahead and write all these out. I'm going to select all these lines, write out the configuration data. So these are transferred into these values here. As soon as we got all this data correct, look what happened. The encoder recognized that gave us a success message, and we are now online with that encoder. So keep an eye on these status tags. They're really, really helpful when you have to debug problems with your adapter devices. Well, we're online. Here's my input data. If I reach down and flip that encoder, and sure enough, it changes. Now the output data allows you to preset the value of the encoder. You put the value you want in here, and then according to the documentation, if I put a 2 here, and I write that out, and then I put a 13 there, and I write that out, keep an eye on this value right here. Sure enough, it resets the value of the encoder. Now we told the encoder we want 100 counts per revolution. So I'm going to rotate the shaft to one revolution, and sure enough, we get 100 counts. Perfect, exactly what we expected. Well, that's all there is to setting up an AMCI Ethernet IP encoder to be used with the Productivity 3000. Quick review, all you do is go to Harbor Configuration, drop a generic client on the screen, fill in the blanks. Don't forget to hit the monitor button to create a data view. You transfer that down to the controller, bring up your data view, and on some devices you need to set the configuration data first, of course. You toggle this enable flag, check to make sure you had a successful connection, and everything works exactly as expected. Easy. Check out the other videos in this series for more tips on using Ethernet IP with the Productivity 3000. And don't forget, Automation Direct's tech support is always free, and you'll always talk to a real live person here in the U.S. within minutes. Please keep in mind that while support will be happy to help you with any Productivity 3000 Ethernet IP questions you may have, if you have any questions about the AMCI devices, you'll need to contact AMCI support. Automation Direct doesn't sell or support AMCI devices. Performance plus value. That's productivity from Automation Direct.